And the purpose of memory is not to record our lives. It's not to, it's not even for us to reminisce, really. It's really to give us an understanding of what's going on. So how does memory actually work? So it's not like a video. Um, we're not recording things constantly. It's not like a filing cabinet. You can't go back in and just pick up the same file. What's really happening is you are reconstructing things from bits and pieces that you have in the present. So you might have somebody ask you, having somebody ask you a question, um, and that serves as a cue to your own memory. Whether that will be successful or not depends a lot on how good the cue is. But I think, I think the takeaway is when I say memory is reconstructive, what I mean is it's kind of like you're getting these bits and pieces back, but it's not going to be perfect. Um, so you're going to make little mistakes that most of the time don't matter at all. And sometimes you make a bigger mistake that does matter. Um, but that is, it's okay. It works most of the time. And the purpose of memory is not to record our lives. It's not to, it's not even for us to reminisce really, um, or to think back specifically. It's really to give us an understanding of what's going on and help us, um, you know, expect what might come next. Is there something then that's physically happening in the brain? Like if I could peer into it, I could see this happening when memories are formed. Yes, there is. So there is a structure called the hippocampus. It's kind of buried in the brain. It's underneath um, some cortical layers. Um, that structure is really important for remembering previous episodes of something or a previous event. So what happens is neurons fire in, in that particular structure, and it kind of connects all of these different pieces together. So if you are remembering a visual component of something, this one structure, the hippocampus, is going to talk to the you know visual processing areas in the brain. It can then connect up all of these kind of different sensory components of the memory, and in conjunction with some other some other areas, like that is how you remember. Is you've got this kind of indexing system, right? And that's kind of what the hippocampus is doing. Is our memory good or bad? I think it comes down to what we call the gist of something versus the details. At a gist level, like just knowing what happened, you probably have it down really well. When it comes to remembering really specific details about something, there's a good chance you have a lot of those incorrect. Are there different ways we can improve memory? You can practice the kind of memory that you want to improve. So if you want to improve something like muscle memory, then you practice the skill that you're trying to, to trying to get. Um, if you're trying to better remember, like if you forget your grocery list and now you're in the store and you want to remember what you needed, that's something you would probably have to practice specifically, right? So you would train yourself, train yourself on a list of items and then wait some period of time and go back and see if you can remember the, that list of items. What's interesting about training, though, is that it doesn't seem to transfer very far to other types of memory. Like, you get better at one kind of memory that you really practice, but you don't necessarily get better at everything. When, when we talk about Alzheimer's, dementia, amnesia, places where memory fails, what's, what's happening there? Usually. Um, it's not that they can't remember their past at all. It's that they have trouble making new memories. So it's because we can't form a new memory, we don't have access to the old memories. It's like breaking the link in the chain. Um, there is going to be some loss of memory from the past, but 
in general, those the older memories are actually more protected than the newer memories. So the newer memories are, you know, the, the older memories are there because they're it's kind of like survival of the fittest, right? So you can get back to the older ones more easily than the newer ones because the newer ones are decaying or declining over time. And they're declining much more quickly than the older ones are. Are suppressed memories a real thing? No. <laughs> no, they are not. Um, has it ever happened in the history of humanity? Maybe. But the vast majority of them are some sort of false memory. And it's not that the people who are experiencing this are lying in any way. I believe they have this real experience of memory. But that is a subjective experience. It doesn't mean it's accurate, right? And there's a lot of different ways that this can happen. Um, some people just fall prey to suggestion. Um, there have been a lot of cases of false memories, um, you know, so-called recovered in therapy sessions. And I would say those we trust the least. Um, there are also people who report kind of spontaneously remembering things. However, is it truly a recovered memory? Not necessarily. So there's this anecdote about a woman who was sexually assaulted and she recovered the memory and told her boyfriend. It was like, oh my God, this horrible thing happened to me. Her boyfriend said, no, you told me about that five years ago. So yes, it happened, but you it's not a recovered memory you've already remembered it so our ability to remember something like that i told you something already that declines too so i heard this and i wanted to ask you if this is true i had heard that if you look at a picture you then remember the picture and not the actual event I think there's some evidence for that. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's probably a little bit easier to remember the picture because it's like this nice encapsulated scene. So yeah, there's also, I mean, there's evidence that it, it can not overwrite, but interfere with the original memory a little bit. So if the picture is more recent Maybe that's just, you know, maybe you're remembering that better because it's easier to get to. It was more recent. So I've had that experience, actually. So I thought that I remembered something at an improbably young age, but I didn't. It was that I had seen pictures of that event, right? And that's probably what happens to a lot of people who say, oh, I remember this from when I was two. Like, no, <laughs> that's pretty unlikely. <laughs> 